Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good today. Um, today we're discussing 2 Peter chapter 2. And I have my curtain closed because I haven't really filmed in the daytime like this. And I've discovered with the glare from the sun, it's not particularly conducive for me to be visible on camera. So I had to close the curtains. But um, we will carry on. So 2 Peter 2 um, is really pretty solely about false teachers, about heretics, about those who intentionally lead others astray from God's word. Um, there have always been false followers and teachers from the start of Jesus' ministry. Uh, these teachers will spread mistruths, misinterpretations, things that seem like they fit Jesus' words, but in reality don't. Um, he says, in verse 1, there were false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, and will bring swift destruction on themselves. How do we combat false teachings and uh, the twisting of Christ's messages? Um, honestly, the answer is pretty simple. What we have to do as Christians is study the word. We have to like really deeply study the word, not just reading it at face value, but like really getting into the meaning of the word, getting into what it's saying, um, and just kind of internalizing it for ourselves. And also prayer. Uh, prayer is our direct line of communication to God. And so without that, uh, it'll be hard to kind of take things from you know his word. Um, so that's the way that we combat false teachings and also holding each other accountable in our communication and our conversations about God and just in our walk of faith. We have to hold each other accountable and really, really get into the word and what it says. Uh, in verse 3, Peter says, In their greed they will exploit you with deceptive words. Their condemnation, pronounced long ago, is not idle, and their destruction does not sleep. Verse 3 to me can be taken as a pretty condemning stance against prosperity gospel. Uh, prosperity gospel is so damaging to the kingdom. Um, and so, you know, if... if Followers of prosperity gospel um, run the risk of falling prey to greed, um, run the risk of falling prey to selfishness, um, and it's, it's just a dangerous path to go on, um, and a dangerous thing to be professing from the mouth of God. Um, I, I personally have a lot of problems with prosperity gospel. Um, I think it's a flawed ideology, I think it's a flawed theology. And I really don't think it holds up more than just, you know, your basic face value statements. Um, so watch out for that. And again, that's the point of getting really deep into the word is so you can call things out like that that are incorrect. Uh, call them for what they are, point out their flaws, and show people the true nature of Christ. Now, moving on a little bit, um, just to the next verse. Verses 4 through 9 are examples of God protecting his people during times of uncertainty and chaos. Uh, Peter specifically mentions Noah and the Flood. He mentions Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. And he mentions us as Christians and the trials that we face today. Um, basically, the point of these verses is, you know, if God protected these people in their trials, um, and their trials were very extreme, you know, Noah survived a world-killing flood, um, brought destruction on all of God's creation. Lot survived the destruction of two cities that were by each other. Um, they're, they're just wiped from the face of the earth. How much more will he protect us in the trials that we go through today? You know, we are not facing the trials of you know, world-destroying floods, or we're not facing the, the trials of total decimation of cities um, that are just gone from the earth. So the Lord, you know, in the same way that he protected Noah and Lot, um, and other figures of the Bible will also protect us today. So we can take encouragement in that. I know that we'll be rescued from ungodly people, ungodly trials, um, things like that. Second Peter 2 gives those who blaspheme the Lord a warning. Um, and the warning is pretty simple, that they will be destroyed. That's a guarantee from God. These people are described as being arrogant, as people who take a shameless pleasure in their sin. They live with lustful hearts, preying on the vulnerable, and letting greed control them. And that comes from verses 12 through 
18. Um, just that entire section is just listing out sins that these people are shamelessly living in. Uh, things that they really don't see a problem with and God saying no this is a problem and it will be dealt with um, so again you know that's a call for us to live in the word to really get into the word to know that we to know what we as Christians should be doing and how we should be living and what kind of things to avoid not necessarily avoiding it as like you know rules and regulations but avoiding these things because they don't give satisfaction in life the only satisfaction in life we can get is through God and so that's kind of why, kind of what Peter's pointing at here is like, these people are doing these things without shame, but they don't realize it's futile. Uh, they don't realize that it's pointless without God. Um, verse 19 to me is a very powerful verse uh, where it says, They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves to corruption, since people are enslaved to whatever defeats them. So it's the same concept of like, you know, these people are preaching false heresies, preaching false gospels. Uh, preaching things that aren't true to people and deceiving them and they think they're deceiving them but in actuality they're being deceived themselves um, they have let themselves be defeated by the enemy defeated by his tricks and his lies and through that they have made themselves vulnerable to uh, enslavement they don't even realize it um, you know, they are slaves to corruption. They can't get out of it on their own. They are stuck in this bondage of sin and corruption. And sometimes they either don't know or they just don't care. Uh, and both, both of those are very dangerous places to be in. Peter speaks out against backsliders in verses 20 through 22, uh, where he says, For if, having escaped the world's impurity through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in these things and defeated, the last state is worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it, turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a so after washing itself wallows in the mud. Why, as a Christian, would we want to go back to the things that we came out of? Christ has given me, personally, so much more than what the world can offer me. Um, so I know I would definitely not be satisfied going back to the things that are not of God, things that are of the world. Um, so yeah, it begs the question, why, why as Christians would we want that? You know, why would we want to go back to the things of the world that tempt us, that try to make us stumble and fall, um, when there's a promise of something so much better in, in Christ and God? Um, so, you know, to sum up this chapter, Peter encourages us to study the Bible to watch out for false teachers, um, and also just to stay true in the faith. You know, by studying the word, by resisting temptation, uh, we can have satisfaction in Christ, and we won't have this desire to go back to the things that, that we did before Christ. Um, so I kind of want to leave you guys with that for 2 Peter 2. The next video will be on 2 Peter 3, which is actually the last chapter of 2 Peter. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.